viewers, welcome to my vlog. Well, well, overall, this was... Hey viewers, welcome to my vlog. My mother, right just got a strike! Spin around, get all hyper, move around. So, um, I have a, the first question is... Um, this is Senator Richard D. Roth. This is Senator of the 30, 30, 31st State District. And so... I'd like to ask you a few questions for Jaguar News. Great, thank in you. In front of all students for um, student council. I'll try and answer them. Fire away. Okay. Now, first one is, could you give us like a quick overview of your job as a senator and tell us how long it usually takes to complete a project? Certainly. Uh, my job basically has two parts. One, it's representing uh, about a million people in the 31st uh, Senate District, State Senate District in Sacramento. So with that part, I uh, deal with legislation, with bills uh, that pertain to the state of California as a whole and also bills that pertain to the 31st Senate District. And the 31st Senate District consists of the cities of Corona, Eastvale, Norco, and Harupa Valley, the city of Riverside, and the city of Marina Valley in Paris. And then the second part of my district is dealing with problems that people who live in the 31st Senate District have. For example, if you can't get your unemployment benefits or if you have trouble getting your driver's license, you call somebody like me, a state senator, or the people that work with me, and we'd help you solve your problem. Wow. That's really cool. Well, thank you. I, I, I love my job. I love your job, too. Well, you're going to be a senator, you know. You're going to take my place. Maybe. Now, why do you think, well, I mean, why did you choose to be a senator in the first place? Well, I, I'd never done anything like this in my life. I'd never run for any elective office. Never been a mayor, never been a city council person. I've never run for a school board. But when they asked me to consider running, I decided to do it because I wanted to fix a problem. And the problem I wanted to fix was we had struggled in this area for years to try to get the money to start a medical school at the University of California in Riverside. And we'd been unsuccessful. And I thought that if I got to Sacramento and was lucky enough to win my election, that I could help fix that problem. I won my election, and with the help of a whole bunch of other people, we fixed that problem, and now we have a medical school in Riverside with its first class of medical students. That is incredible. Well, thank you. It was, it, but a lot of people worked on it, and it was a successful effort, and pretty soon we'll have more doctors in this area to help all of us. That's really, um, really cool. Thank you. Now, this question I'm about to ask you is really important to well, all the members of the student council. Okay. Do you think that programs like art, music, dance should be available? to all California students? Absolutely. You know, I'm pretty old, but because I'm pretty old, I had the, the privilege of participating in music, both in junior high school and in high school. And it was a wonderful program, art the same way. Um, I think those programs help students broaden their perspective, give you a, a broad base of knowledge about a lot of different things. I think art, music, and the rest promote teamwork, just like sports promotes teamwork. You're working together to produce a product, right? Mm -hmm. And because, whether it's art or it's music or anything else, you study art or music from different cultures and different countries. So it helps you appreciate where people come from. It helps you appreciate different cultures. I think those programs are invaluable. And we need to really find the money to fund them again in schools. Wow. And I totally agree with that. I mean, I mean, I would love to have all that. Yes. That would be totally amazing. We'll work on that. You're going to help me, right? Um, I'll try. Good. <laughs> now, what projects are you working on that will benefit students in our community and make our community a better place? Well, you know, in the first place, the one project that is specific to the Corona Norco uh, school district is trying to maintain the funding for the vocational agriculture program. It's a very, very, very fine program. 
um, here in Corona Norco, and we're trying to make sure that the money stays in the budget for that program um, at the high school level and also in the Lake Elsinore Unified School District. The other thing I'm doing is, I don't know if you know it, but there are about 144 families just south of here that live in, a, in an unincorporated area. They're not in a city. But the kids and the families, they don't have clean drinking water. So when they go to the sink in the bathroom or the sink in the kitchen and they turn the faucet on, they can't drink the water. And so what we're having to do is we're having to bring water, drinking water, in in big tanker trucks. And the families have to go to those trucks with old milk jugs and get their drinking water and take it home. So one of the things I'm working on is a bill to allow water companies in other parts of the state to connect to that area and provide clean drinking water uh, to those families. The other project I'm working on is the city of just north of here, the city of Haruka Valley, um, has lost about half of its money. And so we're working on a bill in Sacramento to provide more money to that city so they can stay in business and continue to provide trash pickup, police services, and the other kinds of services that people there need. And finally, uh, another project that I'm working on that's important, to, that I think is important to our region, is to get some money to try to create more programs so that doctors can train here, finish their training here, and stay here. So when you get sick, it's easy for you to find a doctor because right now it's not quite so easy to find a doctor for a lot of people. That's really amazing. That's really cool. Well, thank you. I think those are important programs. With a lot of help, we should be able to make all those work and, and help improve where we live. So, anyone in the Student Council wants to ask a question? My name is Anna Coffield, and I want to ask you, what is the latest project you have been working on? Well, the latest project, because it's got a timeline attached to it, is the project I just described to save those. There are four cities in Riverside County that lost money because of things that people did in Sacramento to take the money away. And I have a bill right now in the legislature to restore that money to those cities. And the cities are Wildemar, Menifee, down south, Eastvale, around here, and Harupa Valley, just north of here. Uh, it's important because, in particular for Harupa Valley, if I don't get the money to that city by next year in the summer, they have to have a vote of the people to disincorporate, to do away with the city. And that's pretty sad. So I'm working very, very hard to get the money to those cities before next year. I hope you succeed. Thank you very much. With your help, I will. Thank you. How do you think that you can help schools in like need of supplies and equipment? Well, the, the most important thing that I can do as a state senator is to make sure that we continue to put more and more money into the classroom. We're doing that. We have something called a local control funding formula that the governor approved where we direct more money than we ever have before, at least in recent years, to schools and to classrooms that really need the money. And so the most important job I have is to make sure that that money continues to flow down to the schools and the classrooms and to try and make more money flow uh, as quickly as we can as the state economy improves. Thank you. How, now this is a, another really important question that the student council wanted to ask you. How can you make school vehicles safer? Well, I rely on the California Highway Patrol. You know, the Highway Patrol is responsible for inspecting school vehicles and making sure they're as safe as possible. But I'm in favor of doing whatever we possibly can to make our school vehicles, our school buses, safe for students. Um, some have suggested that we install seat belts in buses. I don't think you have seat belts today. Um, I'm in favor of seat belts in buses. Um, Tell but, me about it. But you know, it also requires what? Money. It requires money, but we'll get you the money, but it requires students to use the seat belts. And we've seen that recently where we've had seat belts in buses and students don't want to put them on 
and then you know bad things happen. So I'm all in favor of increasing safety in buses. I'll put seat belts in buses as, as quickly as we can get the money if uh, the schools and the students want the seat belts. But you have to use them. It's just like your car. And if you don't use a seat belt, you know, the seat belt's only as good as the people that wear them, right? So I'll work on that. Okay, wow. That is really, that's a really cool idea of installing seat belts in buses. Whenever I'm in a bus, I mean, seriously, I get like blind or falling off the seat. Well, just think about when you sit in the front of the bus in that front seat and you're looking at that big window, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be strapped in if you can. And also, would anyone want to, anyone would, from student council would want to ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Stephanie Guevara, and um, I would have to ask, ask a question. How will you help um, make schools a safer place for us to learn and be? Well, we're trying to do that. We have a series, we've had a series of bills uh, having to do with bullying uh, in schools and in the classroom. We're very, very concerned about that in Sacramento. We also need to take a look at making sure we have the best training programs that we can possibly have to train administrators, teachers, staff, and to some extent other students to identify behavioral problems, problems before they um, explode, and try to deal with them at the lowest possible level. So we'll keep working on that. We're going to keep focusing on bullying as a problem. We're going to keep focusing on our training problems to make sure that if we have students who have a problem, if we have teachers that have problems or staff that have problems, that we identify those problems ahead of time and we deal with them before they turn into a difficult situation. Okay. That's a very good question. Thank you. And would anyone else want to ask a question? Yes, ma'am. What are you going to do to change the future of schools? What am I going to do to change the future of schools? Well, I think we're doing that with um, the Common Core curriculum. What we're doing is we're trying to de-emphasize testing for testing's sake and make sure that we concentrate on math, that we concentrate on reading, that we concentrate on the kind of skills that are necessary to train, train all of you to work in the jobs of the future. I think that's very, very important because it's our obligation to give you the skills when you leave school so that you can go out and you can work in the community and you can do good things. And that's what we're doing in Sacramento. We're trying to make sure that we get enough money into the classrooms. We're trying to make sure that the curriculum is, what you study is, is, is right and it's the right thing to study so that when you graduate, you can move into good, high-paying jobs. Thank you for asking that question. Why do you think it was important, though, to change, to make changes to California school state testing? Well, you know, life, from my personal perspective, life is not a bubble test. You know those tests you take and you fill in a little bubble? Yeah. You have to make decisions and you have to make choices, and it's more than just taking a test. It's knowing how to analyze problems. It's knowing how to deal with situations that come up in life. And so we need to make sure that school is more than just studying to take a test. There's more to school than taking a test. And I think that's the emphasis in Sacramento now, and that's what we're working on. We want to make sure that, that school for each and every one of you is valuable, that you learn what you need to learn, that you spend the appropriate amount of time learning math in the right way that you spend the appropriate amount of time learning how to read and learning the subjects that are important in life. And it's more than just figuring out how to take a test. I think that's a really good reason to change. Well, hopefully we've done it right, and if we haven't, I'm counting on each and every one of you to tell me about it so we can fix it. How about that? Okay. Good. Deal. Yeah. Would Anyone, would anyone want to um, ask a question? Hello. How are you? Hello. My name is Eric Garcia. Yes, sir. And um, I'm asking you this question. Um, what do you think about our school and our community? You have a great community, and your school is wonderful. 
the Corona Norco School District. I don't know if you know it, know it uh, but it is one of the best, if not the best, certainly in Riverside County, and I think one of the best in the state of California. So you have a lot to be proud of. You have great teachers, you have great staff, you have great administrators, uh, and when you graduate, you're going to look back on this school and your experience, and you're going to say, I had a wonderful time. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you for asking it. This is the last question, and, and do you have any advice for kids who may want to be involved in the government? Do it. Do it. And you know why? Because if you don't, you're going to leave it to somebody else who may not be as concerned about you as you are. You're going to leave it to somebody else to make that decision, to pass those laws, to, to make those decisions. So if you're concerned about you, and you should be, if you're concerned about your future, if you're concerned about the future of your families and your friends, if you're concerned about the future of your town, then run for office and make a difference. Because if you don't, somebody else is going to be making those decisions for you.